Hi, my name is Karthi Kanantakrishnan and I'm a program manager in Azure Networking. In this session, my colleague Monica and I are going to talk about the work that we are doing with Azure Edge Zones, private Edge Zones, and Edge Zones with carriers. So I'll start off the session with an overview of Azure Edge Zones and also talk about private Edge Zones and the use cases in the partner ecosystem. We have a couple of cool demos to show you. Then my colleague Monica will talk about Azure Edge Zones and Edge Zones with carriers. So to set some context, um, we have been working for the past few years where we have been working with the enterprises to move their mission critical workloads into Azure. Now, um, uh, we are seeing a uh, reverse trend where with the technologies like 5G, where you need mission critical applications running closer to the user, where latency and um, reliability are very important in terms of the um, the uh, reach between the end user device and the application, we are bringing newer capabilities to the market. And to that end, um, uh, around the end of March, we announced Azure Edge Zones and Azure Edge Zones with carriers. So these are multi-tenant Azure that are going to be in metros. And with Azure Edge Zones with carrier, it's um, going to be one hop away from the 5G core of a telcos network. With private Edge Zones, we are catering to the enterprise needs in terms of deploying private cellular networks. So I'll start a session with private Edge Zones and my colleague Monica will talk through about Edge Zones and Edge Zones with carriers. As we think about technologies like 5G, we believe that the enterprises using technologies like 5G is going to be in the context of private wireless networks. So if you think about um, a retail store with uh, frictionless shopping at the checkout, or smart self solutions to replenish inventory, or if you think about a smart manufacturing facility where um, there's going to be a lot of automated uh, guided vehicles with uh, a lot of metal and machines, where Wi-Fi is not going to um, work in terms of the reliability, the capacity um, um, that is going to be available. We think that the enterprises are going to look towards private cellular networks. So to provide a platform for enterprises to deploy private cellular networks, we have done some work, and that is a platform that we are enabling with Azure Private Edge Zones. So let me go a little bit deeper um, into the, um, the capabilities that we are bringing with Private Edge Zones. So Private Edge Zones is based on Azure Stack Edge. Azure Stack Edge is in one new form factor that enterprises can deploy within their premises. It has um, uh, native VM support, and you can have a native Kubernetes containers to run your edge computing applications. The edge computing applications can be deployed right from the marketplace, and the updates are completely managed remotely from the cloud. So what we have done, also done with private edge zones is the ability to be able to orchestrate um, virtual network functions. So if you think about uh, a, a private mobile network, the core of a private mobile network is a um, evolved packet core. So we are able to run the EPC network function on the Azure Stack Edge. We have also been working with other ISVs who are bringing in networking solutions like the RAN, the routers, the firewall, and the SD-WAN gateways. And we are able to offer these as an as-a-service type of an offering from the Azure marketplace. What we are trying to do with the Azure private edge zones is to be able to run applications and network functions side by side so that you can take advantage of a private cellular connectivity as well as edge computing applications running in your premises. So um, moving on to the ecosystem of partners that we have built, we believe that building a private cellular network is not for a faint hearted. So to that end, we have built an ecosystem of partners who can enable enterprises to build private wireless networks. So if you look at it from the left, um, there is a lot of devices that can operate on a private wireless network. If you take a spectrum like Citizens Broadband Radio Spectrum, there are a lot of devices that are coming into play that can operate on the CBRS spectrum. And then we have partnered with the SIM vendors, basically. You see names like Gemalto and Edemia here. So we are working with Gemalto, Edemia, and GND to be able to get their operational SIM profiles automatically provisioned on the devices. Moving on to the access points, we have working with Comscope and Nokia to provide access point technologies. And we have built an ecosystem of partners who can now 
run their um, virtualized network functions like the evolved packet cores to run on the Azure Stack Edge. So a um, couple of names that I want to point out here are Affirmed and Metaswitch. These are um, uh, companies that are, provide a fully virtualized packet core solution. And we to deepen our partnership with Telcos and to bring these capabilities closer to enterprise customers, we, um, we have acquired these companies and we want to do a lot of innovation with this. So with these capabilities, we believe that enterprises should be able to put together private cellular networks. We also have built an ecosystem of MSPs and SIs who can take advantage of these technology components that we are bringing in, and they can offer managed uh, service offerings to enterprise customers. We also want to get this capability in front of the telcos so that telcos can provide end-to-end -end solution to you. So going into the specifications of the um, Azure Stack Edge that enables private edge zones, we are launching at Ignite a new SKU, which is the Azure Stack Edge Pro. The Azure Stack Edge Pro is capable of supporting, it has uh, a Tesla T4 on it. You can have one or two Tesla T4s that can support GPU inferencing at the edge. We have also updated the network configuration on the box to support network acceleration so that we can run specialized network functions like the packet core and SD-WAN uh, CPEs. So private wireless network and connectivity is one aspect of it where you can run the network functions on the box. Uh, but the end-to-end -end solution for a customer is not complete without running edge computing application side by side with respect to a uh, private wireless network. So Azure Stack Edge supports the following capabilities in terms of enabling compute and facilitating deployment of edge computing applications. So it has an IoT edge runtime and it has native Kubernetes support, which makes it easier for you to click and deploy a container-based edge computing applications. There is also virtual machine support on this platform to bring your legacy applications uh, running on the Azure Stack Edge. So uh, going into the actual Kubernetes support on the platform itself, you can use two orchestration mechanisms to deploy your containerized workloads. You have Arc for Kubernetes, which is currently in preview, that you can uh, use to deploy your containerized workload by pointing it to a, a container repository in Azure. You can also use an IoT Edge and an IoT Hub runtime to be able to deploy edge computing applications onto the um, Azure Stack Edge. So uh, to uh, bring it all together with private edge zones, what we have enabled is the capability for you to be able to uh, work with our ecosystem of partners to cover the end-to-end -end scenario all the way from the devices to a spectrum selection like CBRS, and then the access point um, piece of it from companies like Ruckus, Comscope, and Nokia. And then the ecosystem of partners that we have built in terms of bringing the network functions to run on the Azure Stack Edge um, and the edge computing applications that are offered as a managed app with the GPU support. We believe that this will enable enterprises to look into scenarios like private wireless networks with the edge computing application. Now, I want to switch into a couple of demos that I want to showcase today to show the work that we have been doing with the different partners. And uh, let's talk through these demo scenarios. So the first demo that I want to talk about is the work that we are doing with Nokia Digital Automation Cloud. Nokia Digital Automation Cloud offers a complete private wireless solution. So. Um, we, we, in conversations with Nokia, Nokia has always already been talking to customers in different verticals who are looking into private wireless networks. So this could be um, a, a farm in a remote location where there are wind turbines and there is no uh, LTE coverage there. You can think about private wireless net networks running in there with the uh, CBRS or a shared spectrum uh, that is available globally. There are also scenarios with the employee safety in, in a mining type of a setup and automated guided vehicles um, in, in a mining type of a setup where private wireless networks can have significant value. Now, uh, the other scenarios that Nokia is targeting is basically ports and uh, <clears throat> manufacturing, smart manufacturing facilities where um, private wireless networks provide the um, uh, coverage and the reliability for mission-critical applications that need to run. 
So the Nokia Digital Automation Cloud is a complete solution all the way from the um, uh, device management to the different types of access points they offer. So you have you, the, the solution starts with the, the Pico cell, which is for the smaller indoor cells, all the way to the mini um, and the macro cells. And then you have a complete outdoor access point. So these are for uh, providing you the solution within your on-premises network in terms of the RF engineering and in terms of the access points that can support different spectrums. Now, the work that we have done with uh, Nokia Digital Automation Cloud is in terms of running the Nokia DAC virtual network function with their EPC. We have done the work to um, uh, provide a solution to the customer where a customer should be able to click and deploy the NDAC edge on the Azure Stack Edge. And then once the access points are wired up and the SIM profiles are provisioned, you can now completely manage the solution from the Nokia Digital Automation Cloud Portal and the Azure Portal to give you a cloud-managed experience for private LTE. We believe that this will um, open up possibilities for enterprises to and the enterprises IT operations team to take advantage of technologies like private cellular networks. So here I have a Nokia small cell LTE and an Azure Stack Edge device. Now, as far as the enterprise deployment goes, once these access points and the Azure Stack Edge device are physically connected within the enterprise network, you can now go into your Azure subscription and you can go into the Azure Network Function Manager VNF Blade and you can select a resource group in which you want to deploy the Nokia DAC VNF and you can pick your Azure Stack Edge device. You can then give a name for the resource that you are creating on the Azure portal. Then um, you can select Nokia as the vendor and the SKU that you want, the different SKUs from which Nokia offers. And then you can also select the user data configurations that are specific for your network you can specify that and upload that file here. So once you have selected all of these properties, um, the virtual network function is now validated. And when you click the create button, the VNF um, is actually in the process of getting deployed. Now here, what we have done is basically, um, we have done the work with Nokia in terms of an API integration between our service and Nokia Digital Automation Cloud. So as the deployment of this resource progresses, there will be um, an integration that is done between Nokia and us where they automatically get notified in terms of an um, actual NDAC resource that is getting deployed. So you will see your VNF resource and your VNF resource will be in the not provision state. Now Nokia can go into the vendor portal and from here they can push the additional configuration changes and they can click the start provisioning button at which point the Nokia VNF gets deployed on the box. Now, you can then go into the Nokia Digital Automation Cloud Portal and into the Management Console. And here is a single pane of glass for you to provision the operational SIM profiles, which will get applied to the EPC. And then once the um, complete end-to-end -end network connectivity is there, you can go and now activate a device with the private LTE SIM, and then you can start navigating um, to the different applications that you want to. Now, here is an actual demo of uh, a private LTE setup and um, video traffic going to a Microsoft endpoint. Now that we saw a demo of Nokia Digital Automation Cloud and their integration with Azure private zones and how easy um, it is for enterprises to deploy a private LTE network, Nokia has also put together an MSP offering on an Azure portal. You can go here and look into the details of their MSP offering. And if you are uh, interested, you can click on the Contact Me button. Here is additional details about how you can look into the Nokia Digital Automation Cloud private LTE solution, and you can reach out to the contacts on this slide. Similar to Nokia, we have done some interesting work with the Celona. Celona also offers end-to-end -end private mobile network solution. So let's go through the details of how Celona is integrated with Azure private zones. So um, here are the set of use cases that Celona is targeting as it looks into enterprise deployment for private cellular networks. So there are scenarios with healthcare where there are employees 
with the uh, voice over IP uh, phones assigned to the staff. They're also very keenly focusing on logistics where there are ruggedized tablets with employees and then there is a private wireless network where the data has to reside within the enterprise network. There are other scenarios with the enterprises. Transportation and higher education are additional scenarios where uh, private cellular networks are very interesting for enterprise customers. So the complete solution from Celona includes a set of components that gives you gives an enterprise IT admin all the capabilities to set up a private cellular network. So it starts with the Celona SIM card and the Celona RAND that comes up uh, uh, comes up with both outdoor and indoor capabilities. The work that we have done with Celona is in terms of running their Celona Edge virtual network function running on Azure Stack Edge based on private edge zones. So um, what we have done is basically a simple click and deploy experience where once you specify your configuration, the Celona Edge will automatically get deployed on the Azure Stack Edge and it will then do a call home to the Celona orchestrator. And after that, everything is completely a cloud managed experience in terms of provisioning your SIM profiles and looking at it, the dashboard in terms of the monitoring of the private wireless network. So um, yes, again, the components of a Celona solution includes the Celona Edge. And um, once you deploy it in the enterprise network, you can also deploy your uh, cloud native edge compute applications. It could be a container based or a VM based applications. And these applications can be side by side with respect to the private cellular network. So looking into my um, Celona private LTE setup, I'm now on the Azure portal. I'm going to pick my resource group and I'm going to give a name for the Celona VNF deployment. I'm going to pick the Azure Stack Edge device that I've already set up in my um, enterprise network. I'm going to upload my custom network configuration and pick the appropriate Celona SKU. Once I, once I pick all of these configurations and the validation is complete, I'm going to click the Create button. So at this point, the Celona VNF is getting deployed on the Azure Stack Edge. Once the deployment is complete, the VNF running on the device will automatically connect with the Celona Cloud Managed Portal. And from here, I should be able to see that my Edge node is up. I should also be able to look into my access point configuration. And I will also be able to look at the devices and the device groups that I've configured. I can then go and activate a specific device, which is provisioned with this um, operational SIM profile. The dashboard gives me a complete view of my private wireless network, including the traffic flowing through the network. Then I can go into my device, and I can now configure my device to talk to the Celona private LTE network. So we just saw a demo of a Celona private LTE deployment with Azure private edge zones. If you are interested in um, test driving this solution, you can go to the Celona portal and there is a lot of details in terms of how to get you started. So now moving on to um, other stuff that we've been doing with the different SD-WAN partners, I would like to show a demo of Azure private edge zones with VMware SD-WAN by VeloCloud. So we have been working with um, VMware on their VeloCloud solution for a while now. And looking into the technical integration of this, so um, currently you have VMware, VNF running in an Azure virtual network. So the work that we have done with VMware is to be able to package their SD-WAN VNF into the um, private edge zone marketplace so that you can have the same click and deploy experience of a, a VMware SD-WAN Edge VNF. So in this picture, I have a VMware SD-WAN Edge VNF running on Azure Stack Edge, and I have a VMware SD-WAN Edge VNF running on in an Azure virtual network. What we are also looking into into the future is basically where we can run the VMware SD-WAN gateways within edge zones and edge zones with carriers. So for my demo setup, I'm going to have a, a VMware Edge running within the VMware facility. And I also have another Azure Stack Edge within the Redmond lab. I have to, the VMware SD-WAN Edge VNF running in both of those locations. I also have a VMware SD-WAN Edge VNF running within an Azure v virtual network. So I'm going to show you a portal navigation and a VMware SD-WAN cloud orchestrator view of how this whole setup looks end to end and how easy it is for an enterprise customer to click and deploy all these Edge VNFs and how they can manage 
this entire solution end to end from the VMware SD WAN orchestrator. So here we are on the Azure portal with my VeloCloud SD WAN setup. So um, I have opened the Azure Stackage Blade. This Azure Stackage is now deployed in the enterprise premises, and you can see that the device status is online. So once I have completed the physical network connection, if I go into the Properties tab, you can now see that the different ports are connected. I have the management port configured for outbound connectivity to the VeloCloud Cloud Orchestrator. And this channel is also used for us to communicate to the underlying services in the box. You have the port five that is connected to the local area network and port six is connected to um, the wide area network within the enterprise premises. Now, what I have done is basically um, in the interest of time, I've already created an Azure Stack Edge device resource, which basically enables private zone capabilities on the Azure Stack Edge device. Now here is the Azure Stack Edge device, and this is the Azure Network Function Manager device resource. So once this setup is done and the device resource is registered with the um, Azure portal, now I can now go and deploy um, any virtual network functions onto the um, Azure Stack Edge. Now let me show you an experience on how um, it is going to be easy for an enterprise customer to go and deploy a VNF easily on the Azure Stack Edge. Now I'm on this create VNF blade. I'm going to add VNF. At this point, I can specify my subscription ID and I can create a resource group and I'm going to pick an Azure region. I'll give a name for this resource, which is the VeloCloud VNF. I can now go and pick the vendor to be VeloCloud and pick the SD WAN SKU and select a specific SKUs type. So behind the scenes, we have already done the work with VeloCloud to be able to package the VeloCloud VNF within our service. And once you specify your custom network configuration and you click the review and create button, the VeloCloud VNF will automatically get deployed on the Azure Stack Edge. So once the VNF is already deployed, you can then go into the VeloCloud portal to be able to see the different VNFs that are deployed on the, uh, on the edge. Now I have three different virtual network functions. I have an Azure private zone VMware VNF that is deployed on an Azure Stack Edge in the VMware premises. I have another Azure private zone VNF with VMware SD-WAN that is deployed in the Redmond campus. I also have an SD-WAN VNF that is running in a virtual network in Azure. So now what I'm going to do is go into uh, the test and troubleshoot um, step and I'm going to show you how uh, when I log in into the um, VeloCloud portal and I click on the um, VNF that is running on the VMware premises, at this point, there is a session that is initiated from the cloud back to the device so that I can now go and list an active path between this particular device running within the um, uh, VeloCloud premises and an Azure VNet. So I'm going to click the run command and you will see that this is at this point, the data path is at this point triggered to figure out if this path is up and what type of bandwidth I have on this connection. So essentially, if, if you think about an enterprise deployment and if you think about 50 or 60 different um, SD-WAN virtual network functions that are running in different premises, what VeloCloud does is basically provides you a VeloCloud cloud orchestrator where it provides you a single pane of management of all the VeloCloud SD-WAN instances. You can also then go into the Azure portal and you can look at the VNF deployment on the Azure portal so that you can monitor the underlying infrastructure on which these VNFs are running. So this concludes the VeloCloud uh, demo with private edge zones. In this presentation, you got to know a lot of details about private edge zones and the work that we are doing with the different partners. If you would like to learn more about the private zone solution and the work that we have been doing with all the partners, you can go to aka.ms slash zones. You can also learn about the work that we are doing with the Azure Stack Edge at aka.ms slash Azure Stack Edge. If you are looking to become a partner with private zones, you can go and check out aka.ms slash zones with partner. Now, I'll hand it off to my colleague, Monica, to talk about the work that we are doing with eight zones and eight zones with carriers. Thank you, Karthik. Most wonderful presentation and great demos. So I am here to talk about the uh, Azure Zones and the Azure Zones with providers. 
So the ashbury zones are these facilities that very small pieces of ashbury that are get um, deployed in metro cities uh, away from the ashbury regions, but uh, to offer very low latency for different type of workloads. The ashbury zones are ashbury managed, so you use the same uh, framework to manage and provision all your workloads. Uh, with the tools you already know and love, like the Azure portals and CLI. Uh, this allows us to have a very consistent developer experience. So the same tools and design patterns to build the applications. Once the applications are containerized, you can deploy it in the zones uh, in a matter of clicks. The Azure zones allow us to provide compute closer to the end user or device. So you get a very low latency uh, compute applications into uh, for services, for fast data ingestion, data processing, whatever needs your applications for low latency. The Azure Zones, uh, very importantly, is part of the Microsoft Global Backbone. So all data in transit between the Edge Zone and Azure remains within the Microsoft Global Network. The Azure Edge Zones are essentially local extensions of Azure that provide compute, storage, and services services very close to our customers. We have uh, several use cases, but it is up to your imagination. Uh, media, data processing, IoT, retail, gaming, and collaboration. Uh, and this is are the services supported on the Edge Zone. So the basic services that we will have in the Edge Zone is the Azure Virtual Machines and SLB. Uh, Azure Virtual Networks and Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS. Those are the building blocks you will use to deploy and create your applications. We will also offer third-party services from the Azure Marketplace, BNFs, and other Marketplace uh, applications. Any service that is containerized can be deployed in the Azure Edge, in the Azure Edge zones as a PaaS service. Azure IoT, Cognitive Service, Machine Learning, Stream Analytics, and Azure Functions. Now we are talking about the edge zones with Carrier. So the same edge zones that are provided by Azure, similarly, we are going to be deploying in a Carrier facility to be very close and co-located with the 5G network. So you can offer your customers very close um, applications to their uh, mobility devices. These edge zones with Carrier are optimized for mobile and 5G, we provide the best user experience running data sensitive applications that uh, are attached to mobile devices in the public 5G networks. The edge zones will be integrated with the operator infrastructure, so you can use um, different scenarios in the 5G, such as a slice on demand. And the edge zones with Carrier enables to uh, offer ultra reliable and low latency communications. The zones uh, with Carrier are co-located with mobile operations core networks and offer ultra reliable low latency communications capabilities in the 5G network. We currently offer private preview in Los Angeles with our partner AT&T. So if you need more information, we will have that at the end so you can co contact with us. The use cases for the zones is DevOps, connected cars, online gaming, event cash IoT, and telemedicine. Both the Azure Edge Zones and the Edge Zones with Carrier are connected in the same way and uh, allow our customers to deploy, it, to have a similar uh, developer experience. You just need to get your source code in Git, package, create a Docker container, push to the container registry, and then deploy. So that life cycle, you can go from the Azure regions to the edge zones, to the edge zones with Carrier, and keep reusing your solution. Here are some of the public edge zones use cases, local data processing, all it secure all of your workloads, latest and sensitive data, analytics, IoT, media services, real-time IoT, and edge applications. And then we have a very cool demo with the hard hat. So in this demo, we are going to show 
kind of the end-to-end -end solution, how a uh, developer uh, can deploy a solution either in the Azure, in the Azure Edge Zone, or even in the private Azure uh, Edge Zones that Kartik uh, talked before. The only condition is you need to uh, be able to containerize your application, and then we go over the cycle, how it can get deployed, and uh, what are the gains. So this is the end-to-end -end data flow for the demo we're going to see from the source to the detection, all the way to the processing. And in this application, we're going to be streaming videos and then displaying back into the Azure. So you can have this end-to-end -end experience in a few clicks, as we're going to see now. Hi, I'm Tobias, and I will guide you through the next couple of steps. We are going to deploy a custom vision AI object detection model in different deployment locations by packaging up the trained machine learning model as a Docker container and Kubernetes workload and deploying it to Kubernetes clusters in both Azure West US2 as well as an Azure Edge Zone based Kubernetes cluster. We've already built the object detection model in custom vision AI. It detects people wearing hard hats and people not wearing hard hats. While Custom Vision AI hosts a web-based uh, API to query a model as a service, we are going to export the model using Docker-based export that Custom uh, Vision AI provides. After we've downloaded and unzipped the export, we need to build the container using the Docker file provided. The export comes with the model and an API wrapper written in Python based on the Flask library. Let's build the container image using Docker. After the image is built, we'll push it to an Azure container registry, so we can use that location to pull the image from when we deploy it to our Kubernetes clusters. Now that we have the image in a registry, let's deploy it to two different Kubernetes clusters, one in Azure West US2, the other in an Azure Edge Zone. We'll use the same process and tools for both. In both cases, we use kubectl and YAML files describing our deployment and, and service. As a prerequisite that has already been taken care of, I created a secret entity in both clusters that holds the Azure registry login required to pull our container image. That in place, we can build a deployment for Kubernetes using our container image. We're using a very simple YAML deployment and service description without any bells and whistles for this demonstration. We're going to apply these two files, which will create the parts and the deployment as well as the service endpoint with the load balancer configuration. And we'll grab the load balancer IP. And now we can query our deployed service in West US2 just like that. And this is the response we get back. That was West US2. Now let's try the same thing in the Azure Edge Zone. That was West US2. Rinse and repeat for our Azure Edge Zone based cluster. The process is identical. I've already swapped out my kubectl configuration in the background. So kubectl now targets the Edge Zone cluster. As you can see, this cluster is empty. And we can just apply the same deployment that we made to West US to the Edge Zone based cluster. There we go. As I've already 
grab the IP from the load balancer in the edge zone. Uh, we can directly go to Insomnia and fire our sample request against the deployment we made to the edge zone. That worked too. The takeaway here is that deploying containerized workloads for Azure Edge Zones with Azure Kubernetes Service is no different than deploying containerized workloads for AKS in any other Azure regions. After the deployment of the container, both in the Azure Edge Zone and the Azure region, now we can compare the difference of the latency uh, between where I am located and uh, the, the Edge Zone and the Azure region. As you can see, the latency is quite different depending of uh, the distance between my location and the Azure region and the Azure Edge Zone. This showcases the gains we have in latency when we deploy it into one of the Azure Edge Zones that is going to be near to you. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, learn something and be applicable to you. We're working on building uh, the new the list of cities for the Azure Edge Zones and uh, are adding new locations to the roadmap. Our roadmap now includes cities of Los Angeles, New York, Las Vegas, and Vancouver. If you want more information about the Edge Zones, please click these links, AKS MS Edge Zones, AKMS Edge Zones with partners. As well, if you need more information about the Azure Stack Edge, AKMS, Azure Stack Edge. Thank you for your time and hope we can connect soon.